Hello again, and Kevin Culp here from Super Micro. We're going to take a, another approach to some of these videos based on some customer feedback and different folks of trying to um, reduce the time in each of these video clips so we don't have a video content going on and on and on that uh, folks can simply um, click on a video clip that they want to basically view and they can get, um, you know, information from what they're looking for from a specific use case. Uh, so we've got some feedback back from uh, folks to limit the amount of time in the videos. Uh, and of course, if you're interested in going through the entire video content, you can uh, use the playlist within um, Google YouTube to do so. So before we jump into the demonstration, let me discuss in detail what we're going to do or what we're trying to accomplish in a series of these video clips. Uh, physical asset collection, uh, simulate network provisioning of a super microsonic based switch and Arista switch. So we have two that are interconnected together based on their uplinks. Uh, the next video will discuss VLAN provisioning or building a scalable network for um, the Arista switch and also the Sonic base switch as an example. Uh, we'll explore the MAC address table of the SEC uh, and what it provides. Determining uplink neighbors uh, itself, different, different, differentiation of super micro switches, uh, life cycle management of switches contained in SEC's uh, switch list utilizing SEC network provisioning wizard, and so on and so forth. Um, so this video will really focus on really providing the administrator uh, the nitty gritty or simple life cycle management of the switch. Other videos will follow where we'll discuss monitoring uh, of the switch such as uh, telemetry and analytics uh, collection uh, using the network provisioning GUI or engine to build out a, uh, a quick scalable network, many switches that would provide that capability as far as within your environment. And then also um, the aspects of, um, you know, applying a VLAN to an uplink port, changing the uh, MTU size, administratively downing the port, so on and so forth. So let's jump into the sandbox and explore uh, and let's look at very simple life cycle management. So what we see here is really an inventory of switches that exist within SuperCloud Composer. So these switches have been added to what we call the manual pool operation or pod view registration drawer configuration. Uh, so this is done for us, so we don't have to go through that process and burden you with uh, adding these switches within the manual pool. Um, we've actually done that ahead of time to um, improve on the amount of time it takes for these video clips. Uh, so getting feedback back from uh, customers. So we'll start out with uh, reviewing our switch list itself. Um, so the first one is we, in the first in, first switch in the element list, we have an Arista switch. Uh, as I mentioned, third-party switches are supported within SuperCloud Composer. And why we've decided to choose vendors such as Arista, Juniper, and also Mellanox is because of their RESTful API that we can communicate with them. Easily able to integrate and implement based on that. So Arista is the manufacturer of the first switch. The SKU is called DCS750SX-64-R. The IP address is where you can get into the web GUI of the switch itself. We're going to stay in SuperCloud Composer 
and provide you the feature sets that SuperCloud Composer offers without having to go into the web, U, web UI interface or connecting through SSH or getting onto the command line uh, console and um, into the command line interface and executing commands. The serial number and also the firmware version. Uh, so the next switch in the list is a super micro base switch. It's a G3648. This particular switch runs Supermicro's network operating system. It's ideal for uh, management BMC, uh, connecting your BMCs uh, through the one gig interface and connecting them into the BMC and providing uh, lifecycle management connectivity for your um, servers within your uh, super cloud composer architecture and then also provides serial number and firmware version the next particular switch is the uh, next generation of switches that super micro has now released which are sonic based those uh, sonic based switches um, will continue to um, be released uh, this is a uh, definitely a vision or a um, area that Supermicro continues to expand in because of our reach in the enterprise and also in the verticals of HPC, high performance compute and other various verticals. The, uh, so this 400G switch is called the T7132. It has a number of 400G interfaces. We'll look at that a little bit later of each of those switches. And then also the serial number and firmware version. This one is running Sonic based uh, three version. So that is the firmware version or the network operating system that's been deployed uh, to this particular 400G switch. And then also the next one down is the next generation um, of 3748. It's a management switch, one gig interface. It can be loaded through Supermicro network operating system or through what we call Sonic-based NOS. This one here that we have in our lab or in our sandbox is Sonic-based and provides you the version that we're running of Sonic-based. So uh, as you add each of your switches into the manual pool, this list would obviously get larger uh, and you can perform the necessary lifecycle management for each of these switches. So let's look deeper into each one of these switches themselves. So uh, by clicking on um, the uh, box to select the element in the element list, we can actually go ahead and dump the switch configuration. So the switch configuration um, provides you with the actual configuration that's stored into um, the memory of the switch itself. So in our case, um, we are actually uh, extracting the running config of the switch. And if you wanted to save the switch configuration, maybe you wanted to perhaps save the configuration before you made changes to the switch, you could simply uh, highlight the uh, items in this particular uh, box and simply um, cut and paste them into a text file and then save that or preserve that as a backup before you start manipulating or making changes of your switch itself. So that's a useful uh, use case uh, that we learned from customers that they would have liked to have taken a backup first of their switch before they started provisioning or making any changes to the attributes of the switch. So the next one in the lifecycle management is restart. So restart would send what we call a reset or reboot operation to the switch. Um, in this case, um, there may be um, times when you need to do that based on um, various different use cases or different 
uh, types of things you need to do in your data center. Um, and that it might be a time where you wanted to reset that due to a change form, right? As far as um, you had a change form where uh, it was approved and for some reason you needed to reboot the switch, this uh, capability is there for you. You don't have to SSH to the switch and issue a reboot operation from the CLI. Again, it's about consistency and providing a unified dashboard to manage components or devices within your infrastructure of your data center. Okay, so if you said yes here, it would send a reboot message and reboot the switch. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna move on to the next lifecycle management um, feature within Super Cloud Composer. The next one is the firmware update. So we actually caution you to say that if you are going to make a firmware change, um, the contents of um, the firmware will be overwritten. So we have a nice uh, uh, caution message there and then we provide you with um, what's gonna happen uh, when you make the changes. And it's important to save your, can change, your, save your startup configuration changes before you uh, initiate an update, firmware update. Uh, so you can uh, load the, the uh, Arista firmware into what we call our artifact section. So you upload the switch firmware into our inventory of artifacts, which is located here in the submenu. And then from there, you would extract that information. Um, so you can either upload the firmware um, and that would push it out to the switch itself. You can also go ahead and read from your network management station the new firmware that you want to upload. And it will, uh, with the icon check there, restart the switch after update. Maybe perhaps you want to just flash the firmware first and not perform an update of the switch uh, until you get approval of your change form. So simply we, you would uncheck that option and then go ahead and perform and execute your task and the switch would be updated with firmware. Moving on to the next particular lifecycle management of the switch is being able to access the switch through SSH. So there may be times when switch administrators need to access the CLI uh, and perform an SSH connection. We provide that capability to you in order to do so uh, with this option. The next option is connecting into the web interface. The web interface itself allows you to get into the switch. Uh, you simply click here, it would launch a new window here, and then you would get access directly um, to that switch um, itself, perform the necessary lifecycle management of the switch through the web, unif uh, web uh, interface. And you can see here it allows you to sign in uh, specifically to the Arista switch and issue uh, commands. So we'll close that option out for you. The next uh, one here is being able to look at detailed information uh, that was extracted from the switch. Things like IPv4, the management port IP address, uh, serial number, uh, system model firmware version, the LLDP chassis, the manufacturer, the drawer type, uh, so when you basically um, go ahead and um, register the switch, uh, there are three options that uh, you will be um, asked to uh, enter as a drop down um, is what is this switch performing? Is this switch being performed as a storage switch for perhaps NFS? Uh, maybe you're deciding to deploy an iSCSI environment. Uh, maybe it's an NVMe or fabric environment, so on and so forth, uh, where you have Rocky capable NICs um, that are RDMA capable and you're building in a uh, initiator target, target fabric for NVMe over fabric, right? And you're utilizing um, 
perhaps an Arista switch or a super micro switch to perform DCBX uh, type of um, uh, feature sets. Um, so uh, again, compute, storage, and management switch are options for drawer type when you manage um, or, or register the switch in the, in the manual pool. The next thing we're gonna click on is the tab here to indicate our LLDP neighbors. So we have the console connection connected uh, to our um, Arista switch. It's through what we call the management interface. It's using VRF in order to allow this capability and functionality to occur. Uh, and then by clicking on the ethernet portion here, we see here that through VLAN one, so VLAN one is the native VLAN. So when uh, syst uh, switches are unboxed, oops, we have a, uh, session um, expiry here on our uh, platform for security. Let me log back in here uh, itself because it's looking at my keystrokes and basically uh, providing um, and we get a license violation here. Let me just change this. So while this is churning and, and being able to log in here um, I wanted to mention here um, that our uh, lifecycle management uh, itself through the switch, we're going to continue on with that piece. Um, and we're talking about the Arista. So we click on Arista here and back to the detail information and looking at LLDP information. So LLDP is offered through the management interface and then also through Ethernet 1. We uh, see this, that this is a Debian version of Sonic. So provide you some interesting um, data there based on what LLDP was able to uh, expose when it actually communicated with our 3748 uh, Sonic switch. So that is the detail um, offered within our Sonic, our, our Arista switch. And uh, we can go down and look at um, also information on the side card information. But before we do that, let's look at the next particular switch, which is a 3648. So you'll notice here that the, um, the web UI rendering is exactly the same whether it's a Sonic switch, whether it's an Arista switch, whether it is a Super Micro switch, we've uh, maintained consistency on what we provide and expose within our web UI. So we have the same functionality um, itself through the switch. Um, so we can go back to our uh, switch list here. Um, and um, oops, we looked at the compute side, the network side. Uh, we, we have um, the same information exposed up here too as well, right, for our lifecycle management. Nothing has essentially changed there in regards to um, each of the switches, right? So we can click on here, same lifecycle management for Sonic. So we've been consistent here of what we provide for lifecycle management for each of the switches. Nothing changes just because it's an Arista switch. So let's uh, click on Arista here for a moment and then we'll cycle back to the Super Micro switch. But in here, we still maintain the lifecycle management options or buttons on the top right here. Uh, and we also have a carousel view to give you um, vital information for the administrator uh, for operational state of the ports. We provide an up and down type of situation showing you the ports that are down, the ports that are up. You'll notice the uh, mouse that hovers into the carousel view um, has stopped the scrolling. Scrolling is every five seconds. We've actually placed our mouse in that carousel view to stop scrolling. And simply if we go ahead and remove uh, the mouse out of the box, um, the scrolling will continue every five seconds. So switch up time is available 
physical asset information is available indicating the drawer height, the switch skew, the drawer, drawer type as I mentioned before, compute, uh, could be a storage switch, could be a management switch, the manufacturer, switch MAC address, uh, switch IP address, so on and so forth. So on the left hand side, um, we'll see here information about the MAC address table. So the MAC address table provides you with information for a specific VLAN. Um, and so we haven't created any VLANs at this point itself. So when we create a VLAN, we'll show you the MAC address table a little bit later. Uh, when we're provisioning our switch itself, we see here that we've already defined VLANs associated with the list. Uh, so let's go ahead and for simplistic sight and to give you an indication of how we would manipulate a VLAN list, we have some testing we've done in a VMware environment. Let's just remove those VLANs and just start from basically scratch. And we can do that in the next particular video where we'll talk about um, how we provision VLANs. So we've wiped out the VLANs themselves. So let's uh, go ahead and navigate to the physical ports um, themselves. Uh, this will be useful in performing some bit of lifecycle management of your switch itself. You'll see here that we color code our ports based on a uh, type of device that is connected. In this case, uh, the Sonic 3748 and Arista switch are connected through uplink port number one. And we designate a color code for that uplink port on a, mag a magenta purple uh, color. If you had a system that was connected, we would identify that system as a color code of icon that was plugged into the switch. So in our simple example here, we only have one particular uplink port that's connected. If we were looking at storage devices, they would show up in our switch port, uh, as well as PCI switches and APA, which is a different use case itself. So, um, let's crack on to looking a little bit more at how we would you know, go ahead and manage a particular port. So let's go to the port settings themselves and let's just down the port, right? So if we down the port, um, there's a message here to indicate that um, your connection would be affected. Uh, and if we click there, um, it basically gives us an error message indicating that there was an MTU failure. So there are some checks and balances in place. Uh, perhaps we had the MTU size was incorrect on the other side and, and resulted in the fact is if we shut it down, there would be an MTU failure. So we actually uh, do the checking of the MTU. So on the note of the MTU size, in an environment where you have uh, many switches, it's important to maintain the same MTU size across the entire switch fabric, how all the switches are interconnected together. So you would not want an MTU size of 1500 and perhaps other switches with jumbo frames configured. So anything that is um, in, the, in the region above the standard, say sitting at above, you know, say 2000 value or above is really uh, jumbo frames but usually typically, usually set it around 9,200 9, or 9,200 as a designator or, or best practice in the industry of setting it um, itself. So let's see if the actual switch uh, did perform that operation of actually uh, shutting down the port or administratively shutting it down. And of course it did, the op, op status is now down we see the administration status is also down and we see it as a default access VLAN. Remember when switches are unboxed, they have the native VLAN configured for them. It shows that we've done speed negotiation of one gig. Uh, and so that is uh, how the uplinks are connected from their Arista to the Sonic switch. So let's uh, up the port again. 
So we simply go over to the port settings again uh, and now change it to what we call up as the administrative status and uh, hit submit. If you wanted to make changes to the flow control, you can certainly do so. Uh, right now, flow control is off, but you can simply go and make those changes. And then you can come in here and change that MTU size if you like to 1500 and submit it. Uh, but we'll leave it as basically the 9000 value itself. In this case, it was 92.14, so let's go ahead and make the change, up the port again, and then send the request off to the switch to perform the action. And we should see that port now change to an up status, and the administration status is up. So next uh, particular series of videos, we'll get into the network provisioning engine and logical port assignment when we um, provide additional uplink ports. Uh, in this case, we're just doing a very simple, simple lifecycle management exploring. We'll build up our network to be scalable in subsequent videos to follow after this one. And so let's kind of now move back to uh, the network portion again, and let's look at additional particular switches. So let's look, uh, which I think is going to be interesting, is let's look at the 400G switch, the Sonic switch uh, itself. So again, uh, nothing changes in how we render the, the screens. They say consistent between different switches. Physical asset information is provided. Again, the carousel view is provided. Lifecycle management still there in the right top hand corner. And now let's look at physical information of this switch, the physical ports. Uh, so remember, this is a 400G switch. Looks like we already have VLAN 100 that's been applied to that particular switch. As I mentioned, we'll get into VLAN provisioning in the next particular video. Here, we're just basically providing you with um, simple lifecycle management. The same occurs here if you wanted to perform any changes in the MTU size, so on and so forth, that would be available for you. Uh, all of that is available um, itself through um, the platforms. Nothing changes there. It's consistent across the board. And then we provide you with 400G uh, switches, uh, or excuse 400G interfaces. If you wanted to continue down the list, you would scroll down and look at the next particular elements in the list. If you wanted to move to the uh, front of the list, we, we would click on this option it would start from the front, right? And if you wanted to go to the end of the list, you simply click here. It would then go to the end of the list itself. So um, back to our network portion again. Um, in the element list, uh, let's uh, look at basically the um, Super Micro NOS uh, switch again consistent same particular um, rendering of the web UI lifecycle management still in the top right and our switch particular um, information as far as gathering detailed information is on the left hand side so that's all for today on lifecycle management thanks for joining today um, we are excited about this uh, new switch integration for Sonic and third-party switches. I really bid you a, a great day. Uh, thanks for joining, and we'll see you next time.